Thanks so much, everybody, for all the questions. It's really good. So, yes, yeah, so hi again. I'm Matt. Um, I'm going to talk today about um, analytical workloads, but um, specifically how we're using RDS and PostgreSQL um, to run analytical workloads at CDL. Um, specifically, I'm going to talk. Um, I'm going to show you something called that we call the fast refresh. Uh, module that we've um, developed um, for uh, Postgres in uh, RDS. So um, we've got a, um, a business application that sells insurance policies basically. Um, the solution has about 700 database tables. Um, those tables have been optimized for online transaction processing. Um, in order to do the analytics, we denormalize the data um, to make that model a lot simpler to work with. So we go from 700 tables down to 100 views tables um, that are then optimized for more of the analytical workloads. Um, one of the reasons we did this is the OLTP model was simply kind of re replicated um, and it was accessed directly. There generally is about 12 table joints to get the information that you would need for Kind of entities such as the insurance policy, the customer, or the risk, so those joins can be expensive. Um, so, this is the architecture uh, of the solution. We're using uh, change data capture, uh, so transactions are read from the source online transaction processing database. Uh, we use a piece of software called Click Replicate to do this. Um, we send those transactions to an RDS database, um, it's kind of our data platform running in, in the AWS cloud. The transactions are applied to um, yeah, an RDS database that's running Postgres. Um, so obviously RDS provides really cost efficient, um, kind of resizable database capacity. Um, in using RDS, um, we found that our DBAs have a lot more time to spend with the actual software engineers writing the Java code that interacts with the database and actually spending their time tuning. Um, some of the OLTP transactions actually sped up that as well. Uh, as a side benefit to doing all of this. Um, so as I said, to get the analytics data model, we denormalize the transactions within that RDS database and we're using uh, materialized views to do this. So you can kind of think of materialized views as like data marks focused around like a particular business function, so policy, call center, accounts, that sort of thing. Um, as I said, by turning those transactions into these data marks, we're reducing the number of database tables that the analytics staff need to be familiar with. Um, so we go from 700 OLTP tables down to 100 um, analytics tables. Um, another benefit of doing this we found is we're able to keep the data model that the analytics staff um, are using consistent by abstracting away changes that are happening in the OLTP. So if somebody moves a column to make OLTP faster, we can hide that from uh, the mask that change essentially by making sure that it doesn't move in the analytics model. Um, and then basically we make these um, uh, analytics materialized views uh, available to analytics workloads. Um, most customers are choosing a visualization tool to work with the, the data in the first instance. Now, if you're a user of Postgres, you probably know um, that the kind of, um, uh, it doesn't support a concept of fast refresh materialized view natively. So previously we were using a commercial database that does do um, that out of the box, um, but we migrated to Postgres. So we actually had to build the fast refresh capability for Postgres database engine. Um, so we worked with experts from the AWS database freedom team to deliver this. Um, we've open sourced the project and continue to maintain it. Um, Pal of mine, and he's, uh, he's not here today, he's another AWS community builder, it's called Tony Muller. He's written a guest um, blog uh, for AWS all about this. Um, it's well worth a read if you're into PostgreSQL databases. If you scan that QR code, you'll get a link to uh, not only the blog, but the GitHub repo where we've open sourced this. Um, I will post the links as well on Twitter after the, the talk. Um, before I move on to show you the kind of demo of, of all this fast refresh stuff working, um, I just want to mention RDS Ready. 
Um, so this is a program that AWS has established for partners. Um, we were actually launch partners on both the original RDS Ready back a couple of years ago and also RDS Ready for Business Applications, which we got on launch day uh, this year. Um, it's a really good program to, to, to work through um, if you're an AWS partner. Um, basically, you have to demonstrate and follow, demonstrate that your solution follows AWS architecture, security, reliability, best practices to integrate with RDS. Um, an AWS partner solutions architect will, will review your, your, your solution. Um, again, it's kind of general integration requirements, network configuration, database connection management, that sort of thing. If anybody's used the well-architected tool, it's a very similar process to that, um, but obviously we have a strong focus on RDS. Um, a couple of things that we, by doing this process, um, we got the opportunity to tune things like uh, the connection pool sizes, JDBC, ODBC parameters, make sure they were set to best practices. Um, and also, we took the opportunity to do performance tests to demonstrate that there was, uh, the architecture was up to scratch. And during that, we forced a database failover um, as part of that performance test to validate that what we expected to happen in a DR scenario actually happened. You know, did it go toward, towards our plan? Um, and this was really useful, um, more from an organizational perspective than a technical one, in that, um, kind of as an engineer, I've done my fair share of on call. Um, it's really good to be able to practice DR scenarios because you know if you're working in the cloud and using multi AZs, they don't come up that often, thankfully. Um, so it's really good to be able to practice them in a safe environment. So um, when they do happen, you know that the plan you've got in place actually works. Um, so I'm going to go back to this uh, concept of fast refresh materialized views. I'll walk through the process of um, creating a materialized view. Um, once our module, which we've open sourced, has been installed into the database. So the first step is to create what we call a materialized view log for the source tables that make up the view that, um, that we're going to create. So the materialized view logs are used to track the changes that are being made to the source tables of the view. Um, so we have a procedure called create um, that we, we call. Um, create materialized view logs, and um, we pass in uh, the owner and the table name as parameters. So we've got ta uh, tables one to six, and we're creating the materialized view logs on that. So once we've got the logs in place and tracking those changes, um, we can create the, the actual materialized view. So we've got procedure again, create materialized view. Um, you parameters, you give it a, a, the name of the view, you uh, pass in the SQL statement that you're going to use to build the view and the owner of the view and we set the fast refresh parameter to true. So you can see here those tables I talked about one, one through six um, we've got those all joined together in a SQL statement and the result of that query is going to be effectively become our materialized view. So obviously that view will get created um, but in the meantime, changes are happening to the source tables that make up that view. So we can see here, um, you know, we're making a, an update and changing one value into another value. Uh, and that, um, we're doing that against the table test one. So basically when we want to um, bring the materialized view up to date, we call the process, uh, call the procedure to refresh it. So we simply uh, pass in the name of the view, the owner, and we say uh, refresh it, please. Um, typically, in our analytics um, RDS instance, we're refreshing these every 15 minutes, but um, we do that by uh, PG Um But uh, depending on your workload, you can make that quicker or, or slower to suit your to suit your customers' needs, I guess. Um, so here's a demo of the process, really. Um, So you can see here, we've got the source tables, test one, test two, test three, four, five, and six. With various values in there. So I'm gonna update those source tables. So I'm gonna make a change to test one. If I refresh that screen, you'll see that last record there has changed to the value reInvent. So if I go to my reInvent 
materialized view that's joined all those tables together, you'll see it says goodbye at the moment. But the source table has the value reinvent in there. So now I want to refresh that materialized view to bring it up to date. So I'm going to run the script to refresh the materialized view. If I look at the content now, that value has changed. So what's actually happened there, it's used the contents of the materialized view logs to track those changes. And in Postgres materialized views, you would have to do a complete refresh. So you'd have to run the entire query to get that result with the fast refresh module. It's an incremental, effectively an incremental refresh like you would get in commercial databases. So to finish off, um, with that kind of analytics data model in, pl in place and we're refreshing these, these views every 15 minutes, um, we can basically make sure that our BI workloads are performant. Um, so here's a couple of examples of the types of things we're doing with the kind of visual analytics. Um, I'm a massive fan of QuickSight, as you as quickly will become apparent. Um, so I, I like QuickSight because um, basically you can pay like 30 cents a session for readers. Um, so typically, um, a lot of customers that we work with would um, have a small number of people who produce the dashboards and then a larger number who actually read the dashboards and make the decisions from them. Um, so this is a uh, dashboard that we built in QuickSight. Um, so as a reader, I would pay 30 cents a session to, to look at this. So I might look at this once a week. So I'm not paying a kind of a, a $14, $15 charge per month to do this. Um, I would say we're using machine learning um, as well as part of QuickSight, but all of, all of this data is actually in those materialized views I talked about. So these are the types of workloads that you can get to run on top of that. And because all the data is denormalized, we're going to one table, we can index that, and it's really quick for these type of analytics workloads. Last example, so we worked, um, we really want to kind of um, make um, our products easy to use for customers because um, a lot of them are not kind of data engineers. Um, so we worked with the QuickSight team during preview for QuickSight Q. Obviously it's GA now, so it's well worth looking at. Um, so we want to extend that visualization capability to basically give using basically NLP under, under the hood, but give people a plain English language query tool. Uh, which is exactly what Q gives you. So you can literally type the question and you'll get a visualization. And all of that is running the SQL under the hood is running against those materialized views. Thank you.